Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00. This is my Law and Theories video series. Today we try to learn a little more about the paradoxical and twisted reality of slip space. Slipstream space, colloquially known as slip space or slipstream, and formerly known as Shaw Fujikawa space or subspace by the United Nations Space Command, is a dimensional subdomain of alternate space time consisting of 11 non visible infinitesimal dimensions used for faster than light travel, making a transition from one place to another via slipstream space is known as a slip or a jump. A device which allows spacecraft to perform slip space transitions is generally referred to as a slip space drive. Slipstream space is a specific set of 11 non dimensions existing in a very small bundle above the one temporal and three spatial dimensions perceptible to human beings. By moving matter from the three dimensions and one time dimension of normal space to slipstream space, one effectively changes the laws of physics for that piece of matter. This allows faster than light travel without relativistic side effects, like the occupants do not warp time despite their superluminal speeds. In the year 2291, physicists Tobias Shaw and Wallace Fujikawa were the first humans to successfully implement a device that could safely transition normal matter in and out of slipstream space, the Shaw Fujikawa Translate Engine. This enabled humanity to begin colonial expansion beyond their home system. The Covenant utilised the same 11 dimensions of slipstream space for travel, though the means they used to make the transition are more sophisticated than those used by humans, as evidenced by their markedly faster journeys from point to point. The Forerunners had a far greater understanding of slipstream space, with the abilities to travel nearly instantaneously over galactic distances, transport massive objects through the use of portals, to disrupt slipstream travel from normal space and attract slip space jumps across the galaxy. In addition, they had developed a great variety of other applications, often involving the manipulation of time and space within a slip space field. Slip space is a tangle of intertwined non spatial dimensions, comparably similar to a waddle up piece of paper, rather like taking the classic flat sheet used to represent gravity and crumpling it up into a ball, thereby creating extra dimensions and shorter spaces between points. Our plane of existence is thought to have four dimensions, up, down, front, back, side to side and time, but slip space is an 11 dimensional subspace. Slip space is entwined with the physical universe to the extent that phenomena in one realm can affect the other, and with sufficiently sophisticated equipment, transitions between the two forms of slip space Slip space is not the only such alternate realm. Others include denial of locale, natal void, shun space, trick geodetics, and a photon only realm known as the glow, all of which were once discovered and studied by the forerunners. Described as non Euclidean and non Einsteinian, the slipstream possesses markedly different laws of physics than normal space. Due to its different laws of physics, times, masses, positions or velocities in slip space are impossible to accurately measure based on the standards of normal space. Although they are often used in colloquial contexts, the conventional notions of acceleration, velocity, distance and time are technically meaningless within slip space. Even the name slip space is technically a misnomer because the subdomain is non-spatial. Ordinary matter cannot exist in the raw slipstream without being torn apart. Ships travelling in slip space are shielded by carefully tuned quantum fields which wrap them up in envelopes of normal space. Any construction in slip space itself would have to be composed of specialised forms of exotic matter. Slip space is not completely empty. Clouds of primordial atomic hydrogen are relatively frequent. Occasionally, even comets are known to somehow find their way into slip space. Objects close to one another, such as fleets, often group together in mass slip space transits and may appear to sensors as a large singular object. Objects in normal space are intangible in slip space, 
an object in slip space can pass through a mass such as a planet without causing a collision in normal space. Such an event may often go completely unnoticed. However, there may be risks involved if a ship is still early in slip space transit and passes through a large object such as another ship. Slip space itself is non-visible to the human eye and there is nothing in the visible spectrum to see. To observers aboard spacecraft travelling through slip space this means that alternate domains appear pitch black. Slip space associated phenomena in normal space such as the radiation from the slip space transition are most commonly luminous blue. In most cases, most predominantly in teleportation, these effects may also appear yellow and orange. While faster than light travel is bound to generate chronological and causal paradoxes by nature, ships travelling through slip space rely on a self-healing effect of space-time called reconciliation, more formally known as a causal reconciliation or particle reconciliation, to eliminate any paradoxes that may otherwise occur. The severity of this effect, which scales in a non-linear fashion, is determined by the amount of discrepancy in information transfer between locations, as well as strain on the local space-time brain as opposed to the apparent length of the voyage alone. Mass or size is also a contributing factor, at least in the transport of abnormally large objects. The forerunners were forced to place significant importance on this phenomena due to their routine galactic scale travel. For example, reconciliation has a limited range and time dilation effects may occur if a ship performs a very long jump. The foreigners prevented this by completing unusually long slip space journeys in a number of individual jumps, allowing reconciliation to take effect between each. Despite the limitations it placed on them, the foreigners could also control reconciliation to an extent, enabling them to use its effects against their enemies, hampering or even cutting off their channels of slip space travel. Early on in their history, the foreigners used time phased mirrors to reconcile space time on a large scale. Reconciliation has a budget. Extensive slip space travel exerts strain on space time on a large scale as causal paradoxes accrue a debt. When these after effects build up it can impede with or in extreme cases entirely halt other superluminal traffic and communication. Slip space returns to its normal state as reconciliations are allowed to take effect, gradually causing space-time debt to disappear into the quantum background. This effect is noticeable if large amounts of mass are transported over long distances frequently, slowing down slip space travel throughout the galaxy and requiring ships to perform more individual jumps during a journey. This was seen when Master Builder Faber used slip space portals to transport the halos or when the Audacity travelled to the large Magellanic Cloud. The latter voyage demonstrates the non-linear scaling of reconciliation, although physically shorter than the trip to the Arcs, for example. The other factors involved led to the journey being the most challenging one in the foreigner's recent memory. This effect works both forward and backwards in the linear time of our universe. By the final weeks of the Forerunner Flood War, slip space had already stabilised almost completely due to the galaxy-wide cessation of slip space travel, which would shortly follow with the activation of the Halo Array. Reconciliation is briefly experienced once a ship returns to normal space and manifests as a shimmering blue glow radiating out of the ship, and static electricity building up in the occupant's bodies. On extremely long jumps or in strained slip space, the effects experienced by the occupants may be significant to extremely severe. With forerunner ships, the effects of reconciliation are clearly noticeable for several seconds after a ship exits slip space. Because of modern day humanity's inferior grasp of reconciliation technology, the time space travel takes to normal space observers varies substantially. One cannot depend on the same amount of time passing in slipstream space and normal space. With human slip space travel, there is generally a 5-10% to 10 variance in travel times between stars. A fleet that transitions to slipstream space at the same time may or may not transition back to normal space at the same time, 
Furthermore, if ship A and ship B both were to enter slip space at the same time and exit at the same time, the crew on ship A could have experienced a longer journey subjectively, and the crew of ship A could be a week older than that of ship B, despite appearances in normal space. Though no human scientist is sure why travel time between stars is not constant, many theorise that there are eddies or currents within slipstream. This temporal inconsistency has given military tacticians and strategists fits, hampering an uncounted number of coordinated attacks. The Shaw Fujikawa Translite engine generates a resonant field which, when coupled with the unusual physics of slipstream, allows for dramatically shorter transit times between stars. UNSE slip space drives use particle accelerators to rip apart normal space time by generating micro black holes. These holes are evaporated via Hawking radiation in nanoseconds. The real quantum mechanical marvel of the drive lies in how it manipulates these holes in space time, squeezing vessels weighing thousands of tons into slip space. The Shaw Fujikawa Translite engine itself provides no actual motive power outside slip space and ships equipped with such a device still require conventional engines for sublight travel. Starships and their occupants are not directly exposed to the 11-dimensional spacetime while moving through slip space. Instead, the ship is enveloped in a quantum field generated by the drive. This field acts as a medium between the ship and the higher dimensions, translating its presence as a normal space object to the arcane physics of slip space and enabling it to squeeze through the higher dimensions. This field requires an enormous amount of constant calculations to maintain, with the number of needed calculations increasing with the size of the ship. For example, the slip space transitions of a Phoenix class colony ship require 4.3 quadrillion calculations of the quantum field per second. The vessel's mass is noted consideration in the generation of this buffer, as well as the energy expenditure of the drive in general. Before jumping into slip space, human vessels must first reach a safe slip space entry point, or SSEP, where it can be ensured they will not drag anything from normal space into slipstream space as the ship initiates the transition. In addition, star systems have specific slipstream space transfer points known as interstellar jump points, or IJPs, locations designated ideal for initiating a slip space transition. The Covenant have a very finely tuned version of slipspace technology, far superior to humans' Shaw Fujikawa Translate engine. Instead of simply tearing a hole in slipspace, Covenant slipspace drives cut a very fine hole in the fabric of space-time and slips into the slipspace with precision, much like a scalpel compared to a butcher's knife. It exits with the same pinpoint accuracy and less time during the travel, and is able to plot a course with error not exceeding an atom. This is why in battle Covenant ships are able to slip by human defences by using slip space. It has also been theorised by the UNSC that Covenant drives generate several micro jumps within a single slip space transition to measure dilation, allowing them to reach their destination faster. Standard Covenant tactics include using short slipstream jumps to gain positional advantage and surprise other ships in addition to avoiding incoming ordnance. The Covenant's superiority in drive technology combined with differing weapon and shield technology allows a small number of Covenant ships to effectively engage a much larger UNSC force. Missiles especially can be defeated by a brief slipstream jump as they cannot track through slipstream space. The Forerunner's advanced slipstream technology allowed them to perform smooth and ultra-precise transitions, enabling ships to reach their destination with superior velocities, inerring accuracy and without the temporal anomalies commonly experienced by human ships. The restrictions on Forerunner slipspace travel had less to do with technology and more to do with the inherent nature of space-time which limited their slipspace travel by forcing them to take into account the effect of reconciliation and the overall space-time debt it accumulated. Forerunner slipspace drives used a form of crystal to control and stabilise their slipspace passages. Forgoing these crystals would force them into much more chaotic and unpredictable transitions. The plotting of slip space jumps is known as astrogation and is typically performed by a navigational computer or AI, although humans are capable of conducting at least some of the calculations involved. 
The trajectory of slip space jump is already determined by the time the ship enters slip space. Thus, pursuing ships are able to follow the ship which made the transition. This also enables the pursuers, provided that they are equipped with superior drives, to overtake the ship that they were following through slip space supersession. This occurred when the Covenant Fleet of Particular Justice followed the UNSC Pillar of Autumn to Installation 04, allowing the Covenant ships to arrive long before the human vessel. In addition to having to deal with temporal anomalies, UNSC ships are not able to jump with exact precision. A ship may transition back to normal space millions of kilometres from its intended destination. As a result, UNSC ships often transition in and out of slip space far from any gravity well or celestial bodies. In-system jumps are also generally considered impractical, even dangerous, by the UNSC due to its lack of precision. A notable exception of this is during the Battle of Sai Serpentis, when the battle group India under command of Admiral Preston Cole performed an in-system jump. Even though Cole had made thorough calculations for the jump a week in advance and guidance beacons were used as navigational assists, a part of the battle group scattered, reappearing outside the main group. The Grave Mind was able to use UNSC in Amberclad to make a successful precision jump into High Charity. This may be due to an improvement on the ship due to recent capture of Covenant slip space technology, the Grave Mind adjusting it or possibly using Installation 05's teleportation grid or related systems to move the ship. Cortana was able to jump the Covenant flagship Ascendant Justice into slipstream space inside the atmosphere of the gas giant threshold. Following the Battle of Installation 04, a feat previously thought impossible even by the Covenant. Following the Human Covenant War, a number of UNSC ships such as the UNSC Infinity have been fitted with Forerunner drive technology granting them near perfect jump accuracy in addition to far greater velocities. As a testament to the Forerunner's understanding of slip space, Installation 00, located far distant from the galaxy itself, is able to locate vessels within the galaxy and spontaneously open precision slip space portals between itself and the locations in the galaxy. The UNSC Spirit of Fire was drawn into Installation 00 in just such a manner after drifting in space for 28 years without a slip space drive. Although they are not present as a tangible object within slip space, the gravitational pull of large masses such as stars affects the geometric trajectory of objects travelling in slip space, much like it would in normal space. This effect typically distorts and scatters clouds of dust drifting in slipstream. Gravitational fields of significant size, such as those generated by a planet, affect the superfine quantum filaments that a slip space drive must use to calculate an entry point to the slipstream and UNSC calculations are unable to offset this effect. Covenant drives, in turn derived from foreign technology, have much higher resolution of the filaments and use more accurate calculations, and though the Covenant do not use this ability, are capable of making slipstream transitions in and out of a planet's gravity well. Indeed, while using the captured Ascendant Justice to make slipspace jumps within Threshold's atmosphere, Cortana remarked that it was as if she was blind before. After observing this innovation, a Covenant AI managed to leak the data out to the rest of the Covenant in a transmission. During the Battle of Mombasa, the Prophet of Regret used this newfound knowledge to transition into slip space while directly over New Mombasa in Earth's gravity well, damaging the city and causing the weakening and eventual collapse of the orbital elevator there. These events show that while the Covenant often cannot innovate their own solutions, they are quick to adapt to any practice that increases their combat prowess. The mechanics of the slipspace drive and the way it manipulates the slipspace field have an effect on the time it takes for a ship to cross distances, with more sophisticated drive technology allowing for various methods of crossing distances more efficiently. The size of the ship's engines correlates with the velocity at which it travels through slipspace. Ships with larger engines will move faster within slipstream. Frequent traffic, especially when moving objects of considerable mass, will also slow slipspace traffic down on a galactic scale, although this is only known to have occurred when the foreigners moved the Halo installations across the galaxy. However fast it may appear, human faster-than-light travel is by no means instantaneous. 
Short jumps routinely take up to two months, and long jumps can take six months or more for the crew. Certain UNSC ships are known to be able to travel at the speed of 2.625 light years per day, while Covenant ships can reach 912 light years per day. After the end of the Human Covenant War, the discovery and reverse engineering of Forerunner technology allowed humanity to achieve significantly greater velocities. By early 2553, the UNSC Port Stanley and UNSC Infinity had been equipped with upgraded drives which enabled them to cross interstellar distances in mere hours. Further complicating matters is that transit times between different star systems are not consistent. While Epsilon Indy is only approximately 12 light years from Earth and 83.3 light years from 23 Libra, Madrigal is described as the closest colony to harvest only a few weeks transit time for a pre-war human freighter, as opposed to just over two months to the much closer Epsilon Irandi system which lies only 14 light years from Epsilon Indy. The military starship UNSC Spirit of Fire took only three days to reach Arcadia from Harvest, a star system 11.488 light years away from Epsilon Irandi. These discrepancies are due to the internal topology of slipstream space and it differs from that of normal space in certain areas, sometimes resulting in major inconsistencies in distances travelled. One example of the difference between speeds is comparing the Covenant Cruiser Ascendant Justice with the UNSC Halcyon Class Cruiser UNSC Pillar of Autumn. It took 21 days or 3 weeks for the Pillar of Autumn to get from reach to Installation 04, yet the Ascendant Justice could get from Installation 04 to reach within 13 hours from the occupant's frame of reference. However, this may have been due to the influence of the Forerunner Crystal which simultaneously caused the Ascendant Justice to go back in time for several days as a result of its occupants being on an event path intersecting the crystal. Though the Covenant used modified versions of Forerunner systems, true unaltered Forerunner slipspace technology was first observed in the form of portal transporting UNSC and Covenant vessels from Earth to the Ark, transporting them hundreds of thousands of light years in 23 days, which equates to approximately 11,400 light years per day. However, Forerunner slipspace portals were capable of much greater velocities, as proven in 2555, when a task force was sent to the Ark to attempt to stop another activation of the Halo Array. After the portal at Voy was reactivated, the team travelled through it, a journey that should have taken weeks with the Covenant slipspace drive only took a matter of hours. This is because the Ark's energy conduits that powered the portal slipspace drive systems were generating much more than they were designed for, which allowed the Covenant Corvette to travel tens of thousands of light years per hour. Another example of Forerunner slipspace velocity is with the Forerunner Dreadnought. While a Covenant assault carrier could reach Delta Halo from Earth in 13 days, the Forerunner Dreadnought took only 5 days to travel the same distance. Given the fact that Covenant understanding of foreign technology is comparatively primitive, the ship may have been capable of travelling much higher velocities. This is likely as the mantle's approach was able to travel from the vicinity of Installation 03 to Earth in a matter of minutes. Direct exposure to slipstream is incredibly dangerous, despite the presence of quantum fields which effectively keep the ship within a bubble of normal space. People travelling on slipspace capable craft can experience a range of symptoms, from nausea to heart failure, or even death. It is also known that some people react to slipspace jumps stronger than others. Even more uncommon, but still known to happen, is the total disappearance of a person while in slipstream. Slipspace travel is also dangerous due to the high level of radiation encountered during the trip, which can be extremely hazardous to the crew. This is negated by the use of lead foil in UNSC ships, which absorbs the radiation. Fissile materials also emit radiation, specifically Cherenkov radiation upon ex exiting slipspace. This is not harmful to humans, however it does make emerging from slipspace very noticeable. It is not known how the Covenant deal with this radiation, but it is presumed that it's either that they also utilise a shielding material, 
or with the improved slip space technology and energy shielding, it does not affect them at all. In addition, slip space travel generates a great deal of static electricity on the ship's hull. To discharge to the static electricity, humans have developed a piezoelectric material known as polymerized lithium niobacene. It should be duly noted that this is exactly the material that Dr. Halsey viewed as being quite useful for being the movement systems within Mjolne during its development. Since the slipstream is constantly shifting and its laws of physics are different to our own, the magnetic coils of slipspace drives drift out of phase when entering and leaving slipspace fields, requiring constant maintenance. During the 2490s, technicians had to manually repair slipspace drives, exposing themselves to the slipstream and occasionally suffering injury, death, or simply disappearing. Mechanical failures like slip termination preventable, or STP, can also occur within slipspace drives, usually resulting from poor maintenance. An improperly mounted slipspace drive can also result in catastrophic accidents, as was the case with a colony ship en route to Cygnus system in the mid-2550s, as a result of a maintenance failure. The drive tore the ship apart, transporting half of it to an unknown location. During the fall of Reach, the UNSC intentionally recreated the conditions of this accident to destroy a Covenant supercarrier. Regrets jump into slip space from a mere several kilometers above the Earth's surface inflicted enormous damage on New Mombasa. Prior to 2552, entering slip space from the gravity well of a planet had never been attempted, either by UNSC or the Covenant. The effect of gravity upon the creation of slip space entrances usually collapsed UNSC generating holes and it was assumed to be the same with Covenant technology. The flagship, Ascendant Justice, however, was able to escape from the gas giant gravity well after Cortana realised that it had far higher resolution of the quantum filaments that allows the transition, and she was able to compensate for the gravity. Subsequently, the ability was transmitted by a Covenant AI, and the Prophet of Regret used this in-atmosphere slipspace jump to escape Earth, with the resulting shockwave dealing devastating damage to the city of New Mombasa. Slip space jumping inside atmosphere, however, is extremely dangerous to the surrounding people and objects. When a ship transitions into normal space in atmosphere, the air that was there is pushed aside, causing a massive shockwave centred on the ship. If the ship transitions to slipstream space inside of an atmosphere, on the other hand, it leaves an empty space that air quickly rushes to fill, causing an implosion. An in-atmosphere jump is also known to cause prominent meteorological after-effects. The air becomes saturated in an electric blue haze and luminescent clouds emanating from the point of the transition for nearly half an hour. Exiting slip space in atmosphere is generally far less destructive than entering, as ships have done so numerous times with outdoor disastrous effects. Entering and exiting the slip space is normally only attempted by ships of large mass, their gravity wells stabilising the constantly fluctuating slip space to a degree that allows safe passage. Smaller ships, such as dropships, do not possess the same gravity and are placed under considerable more stress than a warship, able to crack the hull and buckling, reinforcing struts. It is not impossible, and the UNSC slipstream monitoring probes make the transitions all the time, but require heavy reinforcement to survive the stresses, and are unmanned, having no need to protect internal occupants. Specialised craft like the long-range stealth orbital insertion pods can also make the transition, but are an extremely uncomfortable ride. A slip space to normal space transition has been successfully attempted by a spirit drop ship, but it had to be extensively equipped with titanium A battle plates, lead and carbon molybdenum steel I-beams. Even the Forerunners had potential dangers when travelling through slip space. During the assault on the capital by Mendic and Bias, Seven of the twelve original Halo rings in existence at the time attempted to flee using slipspace portals. Only one of them, along with Bornstella Makes Eternal Lasting Ship, made it through. The rest were destroyed when the slipspace portal closed due to the stress of the Halo installation passing through. The enormous amount of mass passing through simultaneously also put massive strain on the slipspace portal, causing any occupants to be dangerously exposed to foreign physics of slipspace. This resulted in causal reconciliation effects far more severe than normal, as well as symptoms involving the loss of perception of reality and time, massive amounts of electrical charge, even depriving the occupants of solidity for a time. After such an event, 
a slipspace channel may not return to a stable state for years. There are also realms of slipspace distinct from the one typically used for travel. A space-time manipulating crystal found on Reach caused the UNSC captured Ascendant Justice and the Covenant ships which pursued it to enter an anomalous slipspace dimension different from the normal space travelled. A slipspace wake is a phenomena occurring for some time after a ship has made a slipspace transition. When another slower ship encounters the slipspace wake, they will be pushed to the speed of the ship that made the wake, thus propelling them through slipspace at the same velocity. The UNSC Dusk took two weeks to get to Installation 05 via the Solemn Penance Weakening Wake, but came back to Earth within hours by following the Forerunner Dreadnought's wake. The crew of the Dusk later exploited the Bloodied Spirit's outbound wake to get to Onyx, 38 light years away, within an hour. In rare cases, various types of anomalous phenomena occur in slipspace. These may be caused by specific artifacts or devices. The effects of these anomalies are diverse, but often harmful. The Forerunner crystal found on Reach was capable of creating a distortion in slipspace, but it also generated massive amounts of radiation. In November 2552, the slipspace transition of the Forerunner Dreadnought caused an anomaly within the dimension YED4. Slipspace has been used as the basis for some, although not all, forms of faster than light communication systems, enabling communication across the vast distances of space in reasonable timescales. First utilised by the Forerunners, such technologies were later appropriated for use by modern civilizations of the Covenant and humanity. Slipspace can also serve as a means of virtually instantaneous transport over distances. Originally developed by the Forerunner Slipspace Travel or Translocation technology, allowed its user to safely pass between two locations by enveloping the user in a slipspace field and transporting them to its intended destination. The Forerunners utilised this technology to great effect, using it in a teleportation grid and translocation pad encountered on many of their installations. Later, the Covenant also adopted this technology and are known to have used it in their gravity thrones and spires. A possible application of slipspace is the use of its 11-dimensional space-time as a platform for abstract fractal housing and processing structures for smart artificial intelligence constructs. The extra dimensions would grant the AIs faster than light processing speeds, but more importantly, it would give unlimited room for extended neural linkages by extension, making the AI virtually immortal, free from the limitations of the Riemann matrix, which would normally cause a smart AI to descend into rampancy. So far, this has only been attempted once, by Dr. Catherine Halsey in an unsanctioned experiment in 2547. Though the experiment was a failure, the AIs of the Assembly recognised it as a viable means of gaining permanent independence from their creators. The Forerunners had developed a great deal of applications for slipstream. These included the ability to create a bubble-like enclosures of slipstream space, in which the flow of time could be manipulated or stopped altogether while keeping the contents of the bubble either visible or invisible in normal space. The Forerunners were also capable of containing these bubbles of alternate space-time within one another. These bubbles could be used to store considerable masses and volumes in slipstream space stably for thousands of years, and potentially for all of time, and to transition the matter from normal space to inside a construct in slipspace without requiring the construct to transition back to normal space. The same technology was utilised in slipspace field pods that were essentially a Forerunner equivalent to cryo-chambers effectively preserving a living organism inside a slipspace field. Slipspace bubbles were also employed in a type of fauna prison cell in which the passage of time could be manipulated so that a period of billions of years would pass inside the field, while only seconds had transpired in normal space. In addition, the forerunners had the ability to construct weapon systems that could fire into slipspace and affect targets in normal space or within slipspace. This is demonstrated by the line installation of the Jat Krula boundary, which were capable of intercepting ships in slipspace. In its final battle against Mendicant Bias, the Forerunner AI Offensive Bias used slipspace ruptures generated by its warships to warp the laws of physics around them and tear Mendicant ships apart. Slipspace portals created by the Forerunners could be used to send objects into slipspace and have them exit in different locations. 
The Forerunners were also capable of generating slip space conduits, which could anchor objects in normal space into place, as shown when the UNSC Infinity was constrained over Re Requiem by an array of slip space artifacts. Slipstream space in its simplest form can be considered simply a space between spaces, a means of traversing huge distances in space in a time frame that can be considered reasonable. The three spatial dimensions and one time dimension is not the entirety of reality, our human senses are simply incapable of perceiving much less comprehending the 11 dimensional existence that makes up slip space and the universe at large. To demonstrate how incapable of perceiving it we really are, let's do a quick thought experiment. If you ignore time and consider a zero dimensional universe you will find it is a single point. No up, no down, left, right, forward or backward, just a single point. Easy. A one dimensional universe is like a line, you can only move forward and backward. A two dimensional universe is like a plane, you can move forward, backward, left and right but have no concept of up or down. A three dimensional universe is like a cube like we live in now. You can move forward, backward, left, right, up and down at will. A four dimensional universe is likened to a cube known as a hypercube or tesseract, which is a eight sided cube all with angles of 90 degrees, where every single side of the eight sided cube is a three dimensional cube with angles of 90 degrees. Let that sink in a second. I'll say it again for you. A four-dimensional universe is likened to a cube, known as a hypercube or a tesseract, which is an eight-sided cube where all of the angles are 90 degrees and where every side of the cube is a three-dimensional cube also with angles of 90 degrees. You see what I mean? And that's just the fourth dimension. There are at least 11 dimensions, both in space and time, in slip space and the universe at large. Functionally, slip space is simply a means of travelling at superluminal speeds across the galaxy to enable us to traverse the incredible distances between star systems in time spans within that of an average human lifespan. Functionally, that is all the average human needs to understand about it, because at the moment anyway, that's all humanity in the Halo universe use it for, with the exception of communication. With time, we may understand it further, we may even learn to control it in the same exquisite way the Forerunners did, or perhaps even better. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below and I look forward to what you have to say, if you understood any of what I've just said anyway. If you're new to the channel and like lore theories and Halo technology being analysed in insane levels of detail, and let's face it, that was pretty insane, hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon so next time I put a video out, you're told the second it hits the shelves. Also, if you really like the channel, consider popping over to Patreon and give whatever support you can over there. It massively helps me out and frees up more time for me to put into this Halo content, which boggles my mind, and other Halo-related projects. Thanks again, everyone. Now go rest your brain. Like, seriously, go and rest your brain.